Hello YouTube Pipers, Double O Pipe, aka Rick. How is everyone today? I hope you're doing fine. I thought I would try, someone told me this was a very good pipe. This is one that I bought called the Barling Trafalgar Bar. With the little jewel right there. My um uh oh, what happened? Somehow it got dark. I don't know. One of these days I may have to try to figure this thing out other than just tape them. And the tobacco I'm smoking is J.M. Boswell's Northwoods. Thought I would give that a try. Well, obviously I don't know what I'm doing, or else this is these, the bits of this tobacco are so large that they're not fitting in my pipe like they normally do. Cleaned this pipe up, it didn't do anything much more than clean it up and it wasn't there wasn't much wrong with it at all. There wasn't much wrong with it at all. Hmm. I forgot the hat that I'm wearing is one that I bought when my son and I were out looking at hats. This was goodness back when he was he wasn't even a teenager yet. He had found one of my granddad's old fedoras and he was wearing that. It's an old beat up thing. But it was his great granddad's and he wanted to wear it, so he did. Like I said, it was pretty beat up. And he wasn't all that easy on his hats, but anyway, we went looking for hats and he couldn't find anything, but I found this and I liked it, so I bought it. That must have been back around 1985 that would make that this one pretty old of course now it's felt it's a Mallory no is it felt fur felt so I guess it's felt but I'll stick to this well, I'll tell you what I don't know if I'm meant to be a pipe smoker or not tilted this thing and some of this burning tobacco just tilted right out on my finger. Woo! That was smart. Maybe that's what Smarty Bob means. Maybe he did the same thing. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. I got me a beverage.
got my pipe lit, at least for the moment. And I was trying to get my mind together on this story I've been thinking about, or this memory I've been thinking about. Back in 1964, when I, 64, whenever I started College of Charleston as a freshman, meeting new people and the girls, there were some really good looking girls. And one of my new friends that I met, we had been hanging out in the student union, talking a lot, was named Mel. He was going to go on to be a, a lawyer later in life. And sadly, he's passed away too. Like I said, being a codger, you lose more friends. Anyway, I was this freshman desperate for money because I wanted to date some of these girls, and you can't date girls without money. I think most of y'all know that. There aren't too many girls that just want to go hand in hand down the street. So anyway, Mel said to me, you want to make money? I said, yeah, I need to make money. Why? Do you know some way to do it? He said, yeah, I do. I got a friend. I said, mm -mm. I don't want anything to do with Amway. Pfft, Amway, he says. No, not Amway. Look at this. And he pulled out a wad of dough. Looked like he had it in his hand. I don't know. Like that. Rolling it out all 20s. Put it back in his pocket. He said, you can make that kind of money, too. I said, who we got to kill? He said, no, nothing like that. I said, well, what, what did you have to do for that? He said, sales. I said, sales? I said, yeah. He said, I got a friend. Let me introduce you to him, and he'll tell you all about it. I said, I don't know. I don't think I'm much for sales. He said, just give it a chance. You'd be rolling in dough. Well, rolling in dough was, that was the way I wanted to be. So I said, all right, let's give it a try. He said, let me give him a call and see when we can meet, meet up with him and let him talk to you and see if you're interested. I said, okay, let me know. He went to class, and I stayed in the student union. When his class was over, he stopped off at a phone booth and called his friend. Came up to the student union and said, I got in touch with him, and he said he could meet us tomorrow night at 7. Would that be all right with you? I guess I can. I'm going to flunk this test anyway because I don't, I don't understand calculus at all. He said, good. I'll pick you up, and we'll go meet him. I said, all right. Well, next day, I was right. I flunked the test because I never understood calculus. <laughs> I still don't to this day. <laughs> I was always good at math. <laughs> I don't understand it. So anyway, we had something to eat in the student union prior to going to our 7 o'clock meeting with this guy. I bundled into his car and he drove off and we went to this shady kind of area of town. Not too many street lights and the house that we were going to had a porch light on because he was expecting us. Got out of the car and there was a dog across the street barking at us, kind of echoing back and forth. Just 
really kind of a, well, he didn't feel comfortable there, let's put it that way. I said, you sure you know what you're doing? He said, yeah, come on, come on, we go. he's waiting for us. I said, all right, and I started thinking, what if he's trying to get me to sell drugs? Now, we didn't have a problem with drugs, we just drank. But the drug problem hadn't arrived back in, in those days. But that's the first thing I thought in this neighborhood and going up to this place. Anyway, went up front porch, knocked on the door, and out comes this guy. Lime green shirt, orange tie. Looked at Mel and said, hey buddy, how you doing? Shook his hand and said, who's your friend here? You said you were bringing him over. And he said, this is Ricky. And he said, how you doing, Ricky? And grabbed my hand, held on to it like it, it was just like a suction cup holding me there. And he, his smile went from ear to ear. If you remember the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland, that's kind of what it looked like to me. Well, I was trying to pull my hand out of his when he was pulling me through the door. Now, Mel followed right behind. Finally, as he got me in the door and the door was shut, Pulled, let my hand loose and he said come over here and sit on this couch and let me talk to you I said okay because I still felt uneasy with this guy I mean there he was lime green shirt orange tie and plaid pants this guy's going to teach me how to sell something well He said, have a seat right here and clear off this table if you would. This, it was a coffee table and I just shoved the magazines onto the floor and he said, I'll be right back. And he came out. He had this suitcase in his hand, must have been as big as he was. And the way he was leaning, that thing must have weighed a ton. And he put it on the coffee table, boom. And he sat down on the floor on that side of the coffee table and said, you're ready. Are you ready to see what you can do? Are you ready to make money? I said, yeah, can you open the case and let me see what's in it? He said, your future, that's what's in it, your future. You're gonna make a lot of dough. I said, well, let me see what's in it so I can see what I'm trying to sell. So he threw the catches, duke, duke, slid it this way. I think it was heavy. It was open and there were two flaps of fabric across whatever it was that was in there. And I said, well, I still don't see what this is. And he says, your future, I'm telling you. And he threw the cloth either side. Pots and pans, pots and pans. I said, you want me to sell pots and pans door to door? He said, I sure do. I said, I don't think I want to do this. And he said, grabbed me by the shoulder and shoved me back down on the couch. He said, let me tell you about it before you do anything. I said, I can't see people buying this stuff from me door to door. He said, it's my formula. It's my formula you got to have. And I said, well, what is your formula? So he reached under the table, pulled out a Sunday newspaper, flicked it open, threw it open, said, right here, this is it. It was a page of engagements. He said, untapped market in this city, right here. He said, what you do is every Sunday, you write down the names of these young girls who are getting married or getting engaged. And then you look them up in the phone book, get their address, give a call, and see if you can make an appointment. 
excuse me, see if you can make an appointment to demonstrate your wares. I said, that doesn't sound ethical. He said, ethical, schmethical. It works. <laughs> he said, I've sold more pots and pans to these women. He said, they're wide-eyed, innocent as can be, and they want to please the man they're marrying. And how else can they please the man but through food? And you got to have pots and pans. And you always try and get the mother's approval. I mean, she's the one who's going to say, yeah, you can come on over and demonstrate. I said, I don't really, I'm not, mm -mm, I'm not very enthused about this. He said, tell you what, I've made an appointment with one of these girls, and it's tomorrow night at seven. Magical number, I guess, seven. <clears throat> you think you can make it and come with me? And Mel broke in. He said, sure he can. He wants to make money. I said, I, sure I can. I want to make money, I guess. So anyway, he gave me the address of the girl and said, you can meet me there if you like, or you can come here and go with me. I said, no, I'll meet you at the girl's house. That way I figured I could leave if I wanted to. He said, you aren't making a mistake. This is your future. I can see it. I can see you making money. I said, you don't even know me. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I don't know that I really taste much in this Northwoods. Everybody talks about it like it's really good stuff. I mean, it's, it's pleasant. No tongue bite. But I don't really... I guess I'm wanting the cherry to come through, and there ain't no cherry. So anyway, I drove over to the girl's house, got there at 7, parked behind him. He got out of the car and said, I knew you'd show up. I said, well, I want to see what you're trying to tell me to do here. So he pulled the bag out of the car, put it on the street, and said, here, carry this in. What else could I do? So I picked it up. Bam! That thing hit the dirt again or hit the street again. I said, geez, these things, they weigh like a ton. You didn't tell me it was going to weigh that much. He said, pots and pans, metal. What you think? So I struggled with that. As he marched up on there, and I was behind him as quick as I could go and kind of dragging, bouncing that thing because I was leaning, holding on with both hands kind of shoving it with my leg as I moved. The thing was heavy. We got up on the porch. He said, they'll be waiting for us. I said, okay. He rang the bell. Curtains came back. And there was a big smile back there. Big eyes. Just happy little girl. <laughs> she opened up the door. And said, hello, are you coming here to talk to me about pots and pans? And the guy said, yeah, that's what we're here for. We're going we're gonna to give you what you need. The mother was standing behind the girl. She wasn't quite so bright-eyed and smiling. She kind of looked at him like, I don't know. Anyway girl said, come on in. So he went in, and I went in behind him, hit the threshold, bang. And the mother looked at me like real stern. I said, I'm sorry, I, I'm not used to this. And I lifted it as best I could and took it across the threshold, and bang, I hit the floor, <laughs> scratched her floor, and she looked at me again. <laughs> I said, I'm really sorry. Anyway, we finally got it in there after a few more dents in the, in the floor. And the salesman opened it up and said, I want you to look at this. This is all you're going to need for the rest of your life 
together. He said, this is going to provide your husband and you with the best meals you can ever produce. And he said, I want to show you something. I'd like to, I would like to show you what a good set this is. If you don't mind, I'd like to bake you a cake. They kind of looked at him and said, pulled, I don't know where he got it from, but it was somewhere in this thing. And he pulled out a, a cake mix, a can of pineapples, and a bottle of maraschino cherries. And he said, if you'll take me into the kitchen, I'll make the cake, and all you have to do is eat it whenever it cooks. It takes about 30 minutes once it's, once it's on the stove. So anyway, Mother said, yeah, that would be fine. He could do that, so we went into the kitchen. I watched him as he was... He washed up the pot, and then he got the bowl, mixed it, put the fruit into the pot, poured the batter over that, put the lid on the pot, put it on the burner, turned it to whatever, whatever, whatever strength he went to. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Anyway, we went back in the front room and he started talking about just yakety yakking. Boy, he could, a salesman? Gift of the gab? This guy had it. This young girl was enthralled with all the things she was going to do for her, for her man when they were married. He was there for 30 minutes and they were just eating it up. Bing! Cake was ready. So we went in the kitchen and he turned it off and the mother got a plate and he put the plate over the top of the pot and flipped it over. Beautiful upside down cake. Just as pretty as it could be. And the girl you need to go out. The girl got the plates and he cut up the cake and got some utensils and we all went up front and ate cake while he continued to talk about his wares. And he said, now don't you think this is a fine set of pots and pans that they'll last a lifetime? And they said yes and he got out the paperwork and he said, Asked them the name and the address and all that stuff. Said, if you'll sign on this dotted line right now, in five to six weeks, you should get your pots and pans. They signed it. He was right. Bake a cake. That sold the whole thing. So anyway, he went back in the kitchen. He washed up all the dishes he'd used put it up, came back out, closed up his case, put it on the floor and told me to, told me to carry it. And uh, the girl was just smiling and smiling. He said, I know you're going to be happy with this. And we walked out, put it in his car. Of course, I dragged it like I did before. The mother just still looked at me like, well, when he got to the car, he said, well, Ricky, what you think? I said, I don't know. I don't know I can do that. He said, sure you can. I've got another appointment. You'll go with me again tomorrow, and I'll let you take over the show, and you can see how simple, how easy it is to sell this stuff, because I know you got it in you. I don't know. I don't think I'm a salesman. He said, 
give it a try. How are you going to know if you don't give it a try? I said, okay, I'll try. <clears throat> Met him the next day, same time, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Something magical about that number. Well, same thing. Carried that up. Still, I was aching from yesterday carrying it up. Carried it up, put it on the porch, rang the bell. They opened the door, let us in. Same thing. Mother looked at me as I was scraping it along the floor. So it was my show. I had to do this. So I opened it up. I said, there, there is the future of your kitchen. I think I, for about maybe 10 minutes, I was talking. He said, haven't you forgotten something, Rick? I said, what's that? He said, well, weren't you going to demonstrate this for them? I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm supposed to. Oh, yeah, okay. Let me, can I cook a cake <laughs> in your kitchen to show you how good these pots and pans are? And the mother said, kind of looked at me like, I don't think you can bake, but you can you can try. So we walked into the kitchen, and the guy said, Rick, haven't you forgotten something? I said, what did I forget? He said, the cake mix and the can of... I said, oh, geez, yeah. I ran back in. I picked up the cake mix, the can of fruit, and the maraschino cherries, and ran back into the kitchen. Asked for a pot, mixed it up, put the fruit in the pot, poured the batter over it. You want to go outside? Put the top on the pan, put the pan on the on the range, and started back to the thing. He said, Rick, didn't you forget something? I thought to myself, I mixed the batter, I, 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 I ran off the things. I said, I don't think so. I think I got it all. He said, how's that cake going to cook if you don't turn it on? <laughs> I said, oh, yeah. And I walked over and said, what temperature do I put it on? He reached over and went, click, click, right there. Good. And I said, in 30 minutes, you're going to see, while we're eating this cake, how good this these pots and pans are. So we got back in the front, and I started talking about them, and I ran out of things to say, because what can you say about pots and pans, really, if you don't have the gift of gab? In 10 minutes, I was through. We had another 20 minutes to wait for the cake. So the, the guy took over and just on and on and on, and these people were enthralled. It just, I couldn't believe it. How uh, anybody can have that much to say about such a common entity as pots and pans. At any rate, ding, 30 minutes finally, and the cake was ready. I asked for a dish to put over it, I put it over the top of the pan, out came the cake, beautiful cake, I mean, these, they did bake a cake really well on top of the range, not in the oven. Turned it off, got the dishes, all that, went up front, cut up the cake, started eating. And he said, don't you want to tell them anything more about this or you got the paperwork? I said, oh yeah, paperwork. I want you to sign some paperwork so we can get this these pots and pans to you. And the mother said, I don't think we want them. Salesman jerked the paperwork out of my hand and started talking to him. Gift of the gab, this guy. Within 10 minutes, they were signing the papers. <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. This guy was good. He might wear lime green shirts and orange ties and plaid pants, but this guy knew how to sell stuff. 
and his future was bright. So anyway, after that we wound it up, got all the stuff back in the suitcase, closed it up, and had me carry it out again. The mother's looking at me because I was scraping her floor. I don't know why people didn't have rugs or carpet back in those days. So we got out to his car, put it in the car, and he said, well, what you think, Rick? I said, uh, you, you're the one that finally sold it. You saved my bacon in there. I didn't even know what I was doing. He said, all it's going to take is a little practice. He said, I got, I got this thing I can give you, and you can go through it and see what all you can say about it and maybe memorize it. I said, I don't know. He said, just think about it a minute. Think how much I sold. I got, I got a 20% commission on that. And each night I get, you know, that's a lot of money over a month if you do it every day. I said, mm, well, what do I have to do? He said, well, first off, you got to give me $300 for, <laughs> for your sample pots and pants. I said, $300? What are you talking about? Isn't this a sample case? He said, yeah, but they're not going to give you a sample case full of pots and pants. I said, well, I'm not going to keep them. I'm just going to use them to show these people. And he said, well, it's $300. You need to go out. Hunter, you need to go out. He keeps coming to the door. I said, I don't think we are. He said, you can pay it along and along through your profits. I said, no, I don't want to do this. He said, you aren't thinking straight. I said, I'm thinking really straight. This isn't for me. He said, I don't want to do it. He said, you're going to regret this. I said, mm -mm. No, I'm not going to regret this. Never have regretted that. <laughs> One thing that guy did tell me, if you ever sell door to door, if somebody lives in a pink house, they'll buy anything. So if you sell in door to door, you look for pink houses and they'll buy whatever you got. <laughs> That's the only advice that I can give you from that story. I don't think Mel did that too much longer, even though he had bought his sample case and everything. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff I've forgotten about that. I did meet a girl, that girl that we sold it to. She didn't get married, and we started dating, so... That was something, I guess. <laughs> so much for a freshman at the College of Charleston in 1964 who wanted money so he could date these pretty girls at, at school. And here's the first girl I was dating was the one we had met to sell pots and pans because she didn't, she didn't stay engaged. Had the pots and pans, though. Well, I can say this Northwoods, I, I can't detect individual flavors or anything, but it's pleasant. No tongue bite, rolls across the tongue real smooth. Blows a nice smoke ring. Oh my lord, I didn't realize I had been gabbing on. I don't have the gift of the gab, but I sure have taken a long time here. All right, folks, sorry I bored you that long, but that was one I wanted to get out of my system because it cracked me up when it happened, and I tried to tell it the best I could. Everybody, I hope you're having a good day, and I'll say God bless. Till the next time.